So you've made your first object or character in Blender and now you want to add some color. Someone told you you'll need to UV unwrap your model first so you googled UVs and had a mini breakdown. What are these strange grid shapes and how on earth do they relate to your 3D model? Let me level with you. As 3D artists we have a tendency to overcomplicate things. Now don't get me wrong, things like retopology and UV maps are extremely important and the more complex your models become, the more important they become. But for beginners these technical tools work like gatekeepers. They frustrate new users and they make them jump through multiple hoops just to do something basic like adding a few simple colors. So in this video we're going to do away with UV seams, projection mapping, UDIMs and all that technical jargon. And instead I'm going to show you how you can start painting your creations in about two minutes. If you'd like a model to practice with you can download the scene file from the link in the description. Or you can feel free to use your own model because this technique will work on any object. Jump on over to the texture paint workspace. Technically you can texture paint from the layout workspace but this sets up our windows nicely for us as well as giving us access to a couple of additional tools. If you try and paint on your model now you'll see nothing happens. But we do get this little error down the bottom. It says missing UVs, materials and textures detected. So we're missing three necessary things here. Let's start by creating a material because maybe you're already familiar with those. Jump down to the materials properties tab and click the new to create a new material. If we change the color you'll see that nothing happens in the viewport. That's because we're still in solid view which usually just shows a simple gray version of your model. If you want to see this color change the viewport to material. Now when we change the base color the viewport will update. If we try and paint on our model now we'll still get an error saying we're missing UVs and textures. Okay let's create those UVs. Up on the top menu here under the drop down called texture slots you can see this warning message that says UV map needed next to this button add simple UVs. So let's push that button. In the image editor window you can see some UVs pop into existence. Being an automated method this isn't the best UV layout in history. There's quite a few UV islands as well as a lot of empty space but this is good enough for you to start painting. For anyone wondering this simple UVs option is the same as going into edit mode, selecting everything and pressing U to bring up the unwrap menu and then choosing smart UVs. The add simple UVs button will only be visible if you have no UVs at all and most of Blender's default objects come with some UVs to begin with. If you can't find the add simple UVs button use the unwrap menu. There's a lot of different UV options in the menu but smart UVs is a very quick and dirty method to get you up and running quickly. Unfortunately we still have that pesky missing textures error we need to address. What might not be immediately intuitive to new users is that although we have UVs, the UVs themselves don't hold the color data. For that we need an image texture like a JPEG or a PNG. Back in our tools menu you should see this text saying no textures. Next to that is a plus button. Tap that and you'll see a whole bunch of options. All of these relate to different textures you can create for your object such as how shiny or how bumpy the surface is. Leave all of that for another day. For now we just want the base color. In this new pop-up window you can choose how big you want your textures to be. If you're making models for video games 1024 by 1024 will probably be big enough. Working in film and animation I usually use larger textures so I'm going to crank this up to 2k or 2048 by 2048. For this texture we don't need alpha although it's not really going to do any harm if you do accidentally leave it on. I'm also going to choose a light brown color as our base to paint on and click OK. The mushroom in the viewport should change color to that light brown and you may notice that your UV window suddenly zoomed in. This happens because we chose to use a larger texture size. You can zoom back out of this if you want to see all of your UVs again. And now at last we're ready to paint. I'm going to choose a red color to paint on top of the mushroom. You can select a color either from the viewport menu at the top or from the side panel. You can control the strength and the radius of your brush at the top or you can right click in the viewport to bring up the same options. Sometimes you might paint a section you didn't want to by accident. If you want to get that brown color back on your brush hover over your model and press the shift x shortcut. This will sample whatever color is below your mouse. In Blender 3.6 and earlier the shortcut is just the S key. And finally I'll add some white spots because all good mushrooms need white spots. This is lore in the fantasy genre. I'll paint in some large white spots not being too concerned with whether they're perfectly circular and then I'll fill in the gaps with some smaller white spots. Now for the single most important step of the tutorial. Save your texture. This is extremely important because Blender doesn't do this by default not even when you save your scene. So you need to save this texture to your hard drive or the next time you open Blender that texture will be gone. 
Over in your image editor, go to the image menu. This little star symbol next to the menu is specifically there to tell you that this image hasn't been saved yet. The file should already be named something like mushroom base color, which is a good name. Choose a simple file format, either PNG or JPEG is good. Personally, I use PNGs these days as I've found that JPEGs from Blender can introduce some artifacts. Once saved, you'll see that that little star symbol in the menu has disappeared. This is a very quick and dirty workflow. As you make more complicated objects, you're going to want to learn some more complicated UV unwrapping techniques. In this next video, I'll show you how you can UV unwrap and add text to an object. But for now, congratulations, you've just unwrapped and textured your first model. I'm going to put some eyes on this little fella. Now he's a happy little mushroom.